Hello, stranger. Hello, Kathy Campbell. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Alex Cox? I mean, I had myself basically shut down for uh, for December and flashed my PRAM and all that, and now I am booted up and I'm on the most recent version of my OS, and I'm, I'm feeling all right. How are you? I'm so good. I took a little bit of a magical break on a sparkly island of glitter, and... I feel refreshed and recharged and ready to stab people with my horn. <laughs> that I'm I'm so very glad to hear that. Uh, and our our mutual friend Matthew Casanelli wanted me to pass along that he showered today. Oh, good. Uh, to you. <laughs> good. Um, I would tell you to tell him that I have not yet, but uh, I will <laughs> uh, tell him later. Yeah, we. Uh, we talked yesterday without you. We just decided to say screw the middleman and talk to each Ugh. other. Ugh. I know. It's terrible. Wow. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I hope you're okay with it, but also don't care. Um, and <laughs> one of the things is uh, we kind of challenged each other to shower every day. So that's a thing that happens when you work from home and you don't see mm-hmm. people very often um showering kind of gets down on the list and that it, it was kind of a block for him to be filming videos was ugh, i have to shower and i was like well what if you just shower every day and then it's not a block anymore and um then he challenged me too and i was like oh crap that means i'd have to shower <laughs> so I mean, the day's not over. I know. No, exactly. My plan is to shower tonight when I get back from Yay. dance class. Yay. Oh, you're a you're a night shower. No, I, I am a shower when I need to. I wish I could be that person. Yeah. I No, I admire that. It's like, so when I was um, working a jobby job, I did shower every morning. Like morning was my time to shower because it woke me up. It helped me feel like good and together and clean and not stinky and like all of those things. And since I've been working from home, it's become a, uh, I guess I should probably shower. Um, Less so now that I have long hair and I don't have my pixie cut anymore because it makes it uh, it's easier to hide greasy hair in uh, a long hairdo because you can just, well, I just put it up anyways, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, um, so I need to get back into that habit of showering more often. I think this is super interesting. Like, I I hate showering, but I do almost... Sometimes I shower twice a day. I definitely take a shower every day, um, just because I'm. That's for for me. That's kind of the baseline for my mental health. Is like, okay, did you at least take the time to shower today? Yeah. And that's absolutely not the case for everybody. It's just m- like my thing because. Uh, and the reason, also the reason I hate showering is a whole different episode about like body issues and feeling uncomfortable and shaving. But uh, this, actually, I haven't shaved my legs in like a month. Wow. <sighs> wow. I'm, I just became very proud of myself. What a weird thing to take pride in. <laughs> Yay, Alex. <laughs> oh, oh, well, oh, only because, uh, you know, if you had any bit of stubble in high school, like, oh, God Oh, forbid. my goodness, yes. And uh, I just, for, uh, and, and this is not about, like, women should shave. Women shouldn't shave. Like, people, you do you. I yeah. give no fucks whatsoever. Uh, but for me, that's just, like, everything, mm, uh all of my other things are shaved and like I have a haircut. It's not so much a, a not like taking care of myself thing, but a 
I was like, I don't care. This isn't going to make me uncomfortable. And I just realized that I had literally stopped thinking about it until now. Um, nice. But yes, my my under my underarms are always shaved b- because yes. it tickles me and <sighs> I don't enjoy Interesting. it. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like uh, how... So my arm... Okay, we're going to get... <laughs> Hi, I've missed you. <laughs> well, uh, we're gonna talk about other stuff but we can't i don't think we have time because i was i oh my god i blew you off for a boy you did oh, oh my god oh but so yeah let's talk about some body hair yeah I, oh, did you did you know i shave my arms i also shave my arms oh That's interesting yeah, yeah no i don't thankfully i'm in my so i don't shave my arms because my hair is blonde enough um and i it, i'll go months without shaving my legs um sometimes even in the middle of winter um or in the middle of summer uh just because I'm just like eh um but my armpits are cons- are constantly if I'm showering I'm probably going to be touching up my armpits um because I hate the feeling so the I, circumference of my armpit is odd when wearing like t-shirts and things so like those little mm-hmm. cap sleeve things Shirts I can't ever wear because it's like cuts into my armpits. Oh. Mm. Um, and so I tend to wear a lot of tank tops because of how it fits. Like it just tends to be a little bit larger in the armhole area. Mm-hmm. And this, I don't like the feeling of the hair rubbing against uh, the tank top lining armhole part. So, Yeah. That's why I do that a lot. I I sort of had a similar thing with my legs because I was like, I, I'm basically, if, if anybody has met me in real life, you might not know that I am a Yeti person, but I am a gigantic <laughs> Yeti person. I am so, so hairy and like chin hair, head hair, like everywhere on me is there wants to be hair. And I don't like it very much. And not just for societal reasons, but because like it's too much, man. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> when, when I was like, really, I, th- this is, this is a very sad, bad thing. But like when I was, I don't know, maybe I think it was right before I went into high school, I started shaving my arms which horrified my mom and mm. most people don't shave their arms and they they don't need to but like my arm hair was literally like so dark but also so long that it was like uncomfortable and mm, i was just yeah. like th- that was actually i think one of the first times that i felt like i took agency over my body in a sense of it wasn't it, there was some shame associated with it but i'm like i hate this i hate this so much and then yeah. and like I and and then I was like, oh, yeah, no. And it, it makes me self-conscious, honestly, because people can see like my scars and stuff. And it, it's like icky. But uh, yeah. Anyway, that is the Alex arm shaving story. Um, <laughs> but but now it really sucks because I get like it, I'll get like arm stubble. And then I'm like, do yeah. I ha- shave my arms every day? I guess so. Yeah, that's a whole the whole thing um but oh god and then my my pediatrician at the time like shamed me for it what? like oh girls all want to be hairless these days and i was like so fucking what like is it hurting right. like like uh, there are so many other problems that young women have do you really have to like right. put this on me like uh, <laughs> it was, i'm so sorry you know what? Thank you. I still give my mom crap about this. I'm like, why didn't you say something? Like, because I think she was in there because I was like 13, you know? And like, yeah. she could have been like, well, why does it matter? <laughs> like, <laughs> Although it was harder to be that way um, as parents or uh, it, in those types of situations. Uh mm-hmm you know very you, true it, it just doesn't you didn't really think about it a lot of times mm-hmm. yeah I and when I say I still give my like my my mom is lovely and I I think about times like that where like again it was not 
obviously it traumatized me a bit since I'm bringing it up more than a decade later. Yeah. But I think about how much she has changed and how much she has become an advocate for the rest. Not that she wasn't an advocate for me, but um, my youngest sister is 10 years younger than me. And seeing the way that she has learned and grown as a person as and as a parent is just, it's very cool. And not like... People always talk about when you realize that your parents aren't perfect and you start to see them as people. And I like knew that from a, as a kid. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, no, they're definitely not perfect. They're human beings. But watching them become better human beings isn't something that everybody gets to do. And I try to be very cognizant of that. Like, yeah. and not be jealous because I have felt myself sometimes slipping into that and and not just like oh well they got to have a cell phone earlier but the this, I, I guess kind of the care in which they go into mental illness and I guess yeah. more quote progressive ish <laughs> issues um the intentionality like, behind it all yeah and trying to be like okay they didn't know any better neither of you knew how to communicate they tried their they tried and succeeded with you i i hope um and being but i i don't know i i'm look i'm very i feel very fortunate that both of my parents are still alive and i get to know them as adults that was almost yeah. a coherent thought arm hair that was parents. a very coherent thought i'm very proud of you good job uh, how, how was your holiday kathy campbell it was wonderful um You hung out with your parents, right? I did hang out with my parents. I hung out with my parents for six hours on Christmas Day. And guess who else was there the entire time? My husband. Yay! Yay! Ryan spent the entire day. And then that Saturday, we had a friend's dinner, uh, sushi dinner. One of our dear friends takes all of his friends out to basically all you can eat sushi um where he just like he just pays the bill at the end you pay for any alcohol you drink or whatnot and it, it's a perfect gift he's been doing it i think for five years now no oh god oh my holy nope just kidding uh 10 years oh wow Has nine nine or ten <sighs> i think nine or ten years uh, now where every year this is the thing and it's just so wonderful um, and Ryan got to go this time which was amazing to be able to do it with him um, and he was just sitting there and engaging because these were his friends too before the stroke mm-hmm. they used to game a whole lot mm-hmm. and seeing him smile and laugh and be involved in conversations without there was no stress everyone knew what had happened Um, they knew his limits and they knew that his brain was still working really well and all of that stuff. And it was very, it was just, it was just delightful and so wonderful to see him be able to engage with his friends in a way that I hadn't been able to see in a long time. I saw that on Instagram and it just made me so happy. Both of you (laughs) just looked so happy and I mean, everybody over the holidays, this is the one time I'm thankful for Twitter and Instagram. Yes. Just seeing people in, I, I, I don't know, I, gu- I guess there is this element of look at my perfect life stereotype on Instagram. But both of us are often like, look at this terrible time I'm having yeah. with my life right now. And uh, so many people this holiday season... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I was bracing for it to be bad emotionally for a lot of folks. Maybe. Um, but I just felt so happy for everybody and so grateful and so Christmassy. Like, we've established that I like Christmas, but it was <laughs> a genuine, like, man, Christmas Day. It was just. Actually, Christmas Day it was the first time that my uh, entire all of my siblings and our significant others we were all together on on Christmas morning opening presents uh, together, and that's except for my two youngest siblings, but they still have a teen at the end of their age, so they don't they, <laughs> they are don't not count. dating people. <laughs> yeah, they so they were there, but not with significant others, um, unless you count our dog, which I do. Yes. Um, 
and it was so I I don't know it was I it was very much one of those times where I was like it was a stereotypical like oh my god I'm so happy and so thankful that this exists yeah. especially because you know there's me the big queero and my trans wife and the my evangelical sister-in-law and it was like I it was uh, and also everybody like cried at least twice out of happiness like Aww. it was it was not and that is off brand for my family like we make fun of each other and like my brothers slap each other in the balls and like all that <laughs> and, and don't worry <laughs> that all still happened like <laughs> that all still existed um, but I, I mean, yeah, it, and, and also there was a bunch of medical stuff happening in my family. So we didn't think that people would be able to come or enjoy yeah. the holiday like they normally would. And yeah, really lucked out this time. Um, yeah, that's so great. I've had, so part of the reason that I do social media, the way that I do it is for a memory book. Um, so when it mm-hmm. comes up in my time hop or when it comes up in, you know, photos and, and that sort of thing so that I can remember both the good and the bad. Um, my memory is not the best. I have a really terrible memory. So I apologize if I've met someone before and you have to reintroduce yourself. It's not you. I promise it's me. Um, but by taking a picture and writing a bit below it so when it comes up in my time hop I can remember so for uh, oh hmm. like five years ago my brother spent Christmas in the hospital with his heart issue like with a major heart issue he was in there for like seven days um my most popular Flickr picture actually came from that time period. And I still get notifications for some reason on that picture. Just me with a mask, with a face mask, because they thought for a while that it was avian flu and like just a whole bunch of stuff. And I remember this time period because of my time hop. So I can remember and I'll go back to that time frame where I'm like, okay, this is what this year was. And that's fine because I can remember the sadness, but he got through mm-hmm. it type of a thing. Um, mm-hmm. And nine and eight years ago when Ryan had a stroke, it was also over Christmas uh, or it was right after Thanksgiving. So we, we spent Christmas in the rehab center and I have pictures from that period that again, show up in my time hop. And so there's, I want to remember these moments, both the good and the bad. So if I have, I can see a trend over the years. There's a period in October that apparently we always get sick in. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but we pretty much are getting some sort of flu-like symptoms that week. And it's, it's a record as well as a way for people, for friends and family that are not close to be involved in our life. I have a lot of internet people in my life. And instead Mm -hmm. of texting them every time, hey, Avi did so great at her dance competition this weekend. I can post it there. They all can see it when they see it. And if they don't see it, that's fine too, because I'm still going to tell it to them in person when I see them. Because I never expect anyone to see my social media either, which I think is another expectation um, to be aware of with social media is that. Yeah, people need to stop with that. (laughs) Yes. Oh, I'm not sure you or I'm sure you saw this on my Facebook. No, I did not. Because guess what? Uh, Facebook algorithms suck and they're stupid, blah, 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 all that. Mm -hmm. But like having this expectation where you don't know everything that's going on in someone's life when you talk to them um, is, is good to have. Mm -hmm. The, the other thing I've been, I, oh yeah, I, I, I I have yet to delete my Facebook account. I've had it active and inactive for various times. Uh, And I, I really just need to pull the plug because I, I was like looking through my friends list. I'm like, okay, 
I've always said that I have Facebook so my family doesn't uh, knows I'm not dead and I just cross post from Instagram um, mm-hmm. and I'm like you know what family you can freaking go call me <laughs> like if that's what I like I'm not gonna look at your yeah. racist tweet like Facebook posts and like I've already unfriended you it just so happens that my Facebook thing is public like you uh, um Oh my god, I almost said, Kathy, did you hear about the thing I talked about on Dubai Friday? <laughs> like, good god. Oh, I mean, wow. the truth is, Pulling yes, I that probably stick have. out of my ass. Oh god, ew. <laughs> uh, but there was a thing of like, oh yeah, the people I want to talk to uh, aren't on Facebook. And that's absolutely not the case for everybody. And yeah. um, I, I, I did talk about this. Oh, wait, I talked about this on the after show of Dubai Friday. And people yes. have to give money to that. So fuck that. They probably haven't heard it. Um, Which I it, talked you know. About- Okay, hold on. We got to put a pin in this because I really feel like Merlin came into my area and peed all oh, over my Alex talked, time. He pissed all over my feeling. Well, in a good. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> K- Kathy's talking about a time in which on an- another show I do, Do By Friday, uh, we have this thing called the after show <laughs> where we just shoot the shit and it's even less structured than the normal show. Um, <laughs> but our third co host, Max, who happens to also be my boss at my jobby job, had to run and do family stuff. So Merlin Mann and I just talked for like a half hour. And it ended up being about feelings, and it was very weird. I, I was like, why isn't Kathy here? This is, no, oh God, no, where's my unicorn? <laughs> uh, to be fa- honest, though, I listened to that, and I just was like, oh, I love you both so much. Um, it was an amazing piece of media and an amazing like relationship what? there. No, <laughs> shush, I'm complimenting you, and deal with it. Um, so go to give us your funky... What is it? Give us your fucking money dot com. Is that what it is? I think that's yes, what it is. Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Give us your fucking money dot com. And give all of your, well, or at least five dollars a month to uh, Dubai Friday because they're, it's really, it's really awesome. It's a great show. And you get to listen to Merlin and Alex talk. But who am I kidding? Everyone that's listening to this show came from Dubai Friday. So they all know about it. So I don't need to tell them. It's fine. But no, I one, I don't think that's true. Um, see, you see, don't assume you're doing the thing. You're assuming I know I am. that people oh gosh, have heard. Yeah. And I, I just assumed that everybody came to the show from Friends in Your Ears um, and the and everyone should go listen to Friends in Your Ears. And I assume Sestracast, even though I still need to get caught up. <laughs> Uh, but there's been so much I got on Survivor and I can't I need to watch Survivor and not Orphan Black <laughs> because oh, All I love this stupid reality show so much oh it hurts um, but yeah I've been talking I've been like cheating on you and talking about my feelings with a lot of people yeah. it's very that's weird that's okay because I'll be cheating on you with both Merlin and Matthew Castanelli later this week on Friends in Your Ears which will actually come out the same I'm time so that this episode comes out so yeah <laughs> I, I I think Matthew said he, he was like Kathy tricked me and now I'm gonna be out I with did. Merlin <laughs> 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 and I was like yes <laughs> Because I needed to find someone that was as awesome as Merlin and would not, like, completely squeal and, like, completely fanboy or fangirl or fan, wow, fan fan over uh, (laughs) Merlin, which was the same, like, very cognitive choice that I made, like, with Jason Snell. I needed to make sure that whoever I matched Jason with was not going to, like, freak out and would be able to have, like, good conversation for my own sanity and whatnot. And I was like, you know what? Matthew Castanelli, he can keep it together. Plus, this way we can all talk about how awesome Alex is. And she won't be there oh, to, oh, like, no. argue against us. So, mm, boy. Ha. Uh, I was just, well, hot on you because that plan definitely backfired when you had Mike and I on. I know. It was just like, Mike, I love you so much. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, but Mike turned around and did the exact same thing with you, so it was totally fine. We did. We just were like, I... 
It was Not a mutual fan analogy. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were just like jacking each other off the whole time. Like, yeah, yeah you you're were. great. No, you're great. <laughs> Which was okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I am a hundred percent okay with happy love fest on each other. Because the world needs more of that. It really does. Uh, as I see the countdown to a presidential address mm. in uh, why uh, okay where is that where are you seeing that countdown turn that off close it out delete it no it's just the clock it's just oh. a clock well, in general. delete it out of your brain come on don't you have a uh, shortcut blah, blah, you can blah. run to do that you know what? It, I mean, it it pretty it probably will happen whenever uh, if I if I do watch it, I'm gonna be like bloop bloop. Nope, gone, gone. Yeah. And I, I I do that with a lot of things, and sometimes it's healthy, and sometimes it's not healthy. But this is uh, I mean, like <laughs> there there this is actually I I have I do have quite an ability to compartmentalize things which often works to my detriment and we're mm-hmm. probably we were going to talk about that today yeah. uh, but like but body the, hair is way more interesting yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, but like yeah being able to, I, it, there are pros and cons to letting your feelings leak out into things because i think it makes me a better person but and a better like sometimes a better friend but sometimes a worse friend and sometimes a worse co-worker but like and I'm like oh god this podcast really has changed my life and so fuck that but also yay it's there's so many feelings <laughs> oh, well, I'm sh- oh. <clears throat> it's I sure am peeking it's, yeah. it's so- <laughs> it, it, I feel like once you acknowledge a feeling or the fact that you have feelings and the fact that you want to work on feelings and acknowledge feelings and all of that stuff. It, it, it's that German word for when you see something all the time after you recognize it. I always want to say Gewürztraminer, whatever, but that's a wine. Um, (laughs) But it, you know, where you're like, Oh, I want to pay attention to a Ford focus. And then you see the Ford focus everywhere or whatever. Um, but if you're recognizing the acknowledging feelings and these thoughts and in your brain, uh, it becomes easier to then continue to acknowledge them and process them instead of just shoving them down into a hole, I think. Um, I they're not shoved; they are tagged and <laughs> compartmentalized in and in uh, several put into a... little buckets and and in a safe place, and then. Yeah. It's all in the cloud. My yes. cloudy, dirty, terrible brain. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I admire you, is that you, I think, have a fantastic ability to compartmentalize in, but you, like, in, in a good way, in that you have all of the feelings organized and you access them when needed like it's your magical unicorn like like you said the time hop stuff it is really i i I use day one in sort of a similar Mm -hmm. fashion it's like look at this day in like 2008 or whatever and uh it's really sometimes for me that's super hard uh because i'm like oof that tweet no 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 (laughs) whereas you're looking at me like wow that time sure was shit uh i hope it i'm glad it got better um and i also assume that during tough times you might see something happy in your time hop and like oh right i can get back to that place yes yes yeah yeah it's definitely both sides of it and we didn't record over um ryan's stroke anniversary period uh but that that's usually one of the hardest times of the year. Um, mm-hmm. All of the memories and, and thoughts and consistent posts that come up in my time hop for, you know, a period of three months. Yeah. Um, but yes, we got through it and we're in such a good place right now with his pain level being at a zero, like a zero most of the day, most of the time that it again yeah it's it's like okay we're not there anymore um and i can almost 
you know, pull out that compartment of that time period when it was so shitty, especially when I Mm -hmm. see other people that have been going through it um, or I have friends that have either lost a spouse or uh, their spouse is really sick or any of that. And it does get better even if right this moment it's so shitty and the world is ending and you just don't know how you're going to get up the next morning and you know there's no magical thing you can do or hear or say or process to get through it and everyone's processing is a little bit different but it it's being able to recognize that hard time, but also see if you can find something happy in your day. Um, Mm -hmm. I would, when we were in the hospital, um, and so when we were in the neuro ICU, which is like hardcore lockdown, there's nothing extra soft and squishy in those rooms. Um, You have to Mm -hmm. get checked in by the nurses. Uh, Thankfully, we were only there for a week, but during that week, uh, during the nurse changeover twice a day, uh, any visitors had to be had to leave. Like you had to leave the section, leave the room with your person, um, and stay out for probably a good 30, 45 minutes or so. And that was some of the hardest time because the waiting room at the neuro ICU was the same waiting room as the ER. Mm. And I remember someone's daughter had been in a car accident with their uncle driving drunk and they're sitting there just completely losing it because their daughter was in surgery. And I'm just like, Oh my God. Like (laughs) the, the thought of having to be in that situation and in, in my Mm -hmm. mind, and this is, partially terrible but that's where my brain brain went was at least he's stable um and he still hadn't really woken up he still like they knew what had happened and what was going on but they didn't have any prognosis or anything at this time but the fact that he was not currently in surgery Mm -hmm. gave me a sense of relief which is and my heart was breaking for this woman surrounded by her family, knowing that her daughter was in surgery and just like my heart was breaking and I still could have those happy moments of, Oh yay. He's, he's not dead. He's not in surgery. Like these are, these are little things. And Whatever can help get you through that day is so important to do and to find. Mm -hmm. And of course, I would never say that to anyone in the moment because that's not what they want to hear. (laughs) Well, you're you're acknowledging something that I feel like is almost lost on most people, myself included, of we can feel two things at once and yes. process two things at once differently. I, I, I mean, there, I have been in similar situations in emergency rooms and waiting rooms where it's, it's not, it's not like, Ha-ha, like you're not <laughs> Nelson pointing yes. at it's having like empathy and perspective that makes you even more of a unicorn whereas I and and not forcing yourself to feel guilty in that moment I also think is a big thing too because humans are complex and can have varying emotions I'm figuring it out slowly (laughs) but I and you you can feel two things and not know what those two feelings are yes three or four ah multiple it, multiple feelings multiple multiple emotions and it's like it's hard to recognize like actually being aware of that and once again you know recognizing those feelings that you're having and seeing if you can identify them and tag them and like do them um mm-hmm. is good that's really 
it's it's hard work to once you start that avalanche like it, it's hard mm-hmm. to get to but um it, you can learn to be a good human that way you can do you can get to inbox zero under bad emotions <laughs> it'll it can happen uh, you too can be blank with your emotions because that's what inbox zero is right that's the whole goal yeah exactly yep that's as a really man said in, in emotion zero that's where that's where you're supposed to feel dead inside it's not a process about you know mindfulness no 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 you're supposed to be dead inside yep yep <laughs> oh, oh. oh. Yes. well I, Kathy Campbell, I think we both need to head, or at least I think I yes. need to head out. Uh, yes. Where where can people find you on the internet, or you know, where can people put their eyeballs if they want to read something? <laughs> you can go to I'm pretty much Mrs. Soup on any social media, and KathyCampbell.com has links out to all of my everything that I do, um, including my other podcasts and that sort of stuff and what about you Alex Cox where can people find you I'm at Alex Cox spelled C-O-X not the other way pretty much everywhere um yeah you can I mean but I'm you know you should you should though find you'll be at PodCon correct I will be at PodCon Yes. Do you is that public knowledge? Do you yes. want people no. to come find you? Absolutely. Come and find me. Um and uh say hi uh because I would love it. I will have stickers and uh pins, not fancy metal pins, just unfancy cute little buttons, but you can wear a unicorn and it's so cool. Um, and if you see me out and about with a littler person that looks just like me, uh, that would be my daughter who is coming up because she is celebrating her 10th birthday on Saturday of PodCon and is joining me with my mother in Seattle. And so that will be really fun. And you will definitely recognize her because she looks exactly like me. It's kind of (laughs) great. Oh, man, I... And I may or may not be at PodCon, probably not, because, you know, I'm still, my, my battery has just a very short range yes. right now, because I'm getting it replaced, but, man, I if I go, uh, please say hello and give me high fives, uh, but honestly, I'll probably be, like, looking for the tiny unicorn that is <laughs> Avi, and just... <laughs> That sounds really weird. I'll be hunting the small yeah. unicorn. <laughs> hunting the baby unicorn. That's not <laughs> creepy or wrong at all. <laughs> well, oh, th- thank you so much for listening to my feelings today, Kathy Campbell. I missed you so much. Thank you, Alex. I missed you too. And I can't wait till we do this again. And maybe on time next week. <gasps> That's my hope. <laughs> I won't I won't blow you off for a boy. Yay. <laughs> All right. I Bye. love you, Alex Cox. <laughs> Bye. I love you.